Tim out and gone, oh yeah, he's definitely a Super League referee. Just while we just while we're here, what do you think of the six again rule? That's something we always ask all the players we have on. What do you think of the six again rule? Um, I think it's an excuse. It's an excuse for referees to look like they're doing something without doing very much at all. Um, for me, if it's if it's a big enough infringement to give a six again, then it should be a penalty. And if it's, they should be just. It's a bit like it's trying to um, disguise the grey area. Without the referee can look like he's done something like the one that infuriates me is when they give it on like um, the first or second tackle in a set of six because that's no advantage at all really. If you've been slowed down to the point where it's like a really slow play of the ball on first tackle from like a tap twenty when you're trying to get some momentum, the opposition have gained a big advantage from that and we've gained nothing because we're not we're not going to get another tackle out of it. So I think there should be a rule where if if a six again's if he's going to give a six again the first two or three tackles with a set of six it should just be a penalty um, yeah. because it just I don't know it feels like a little bit of a cop out sometimes. Yeah. I agree. Are we, are right. we good, Dean, now? Are we yes, good? right, Green, everyone. Welcome to Eagles Chat. Just a little informal thing about the six again rule just then. We are joined by current number 16. I think I've got that right. Number 16, Mr. Blake Broadbent. He's back again. Last time he was on, it was about two years ago. We are just in the middle of lockdown, I think. And yeah, we had a great yeah, chat just, then. We yeah. in the pre-season just after COVID, I think it was. Yeah, so how you been keeping, fella? You all right? Yeah, really good, yeah. Uh, you know, we've had a really good season this year and moods are in camp and stuff and you know it's been much a far cry environment from what it were last year so yeah really good enjoying the olp yeah definitely i mean i've been around in the first team now five years and i remember when we when i first joined when we went back down to the olp when it was just the temporary stands um and when you go down now it's like a different you wouldn't even really recognize it if you've been to them early games it's completely different feels like an actual event when you play in there you know whereas when it was just a temporary stance it were you know tough for everyone weren't it fans yeah. fans probably more than us to be fair yeah i must admit the atmosphere is a lot lot better than i went for the first time went to the olp so it's it's fantastic now that for a club that's supposed to have got no fans as well they make a lot of noise for no fans that's all oh, i definitely. can say about that, that. the atmosphere from that witness game the atmosphere is where you can feel it you know now when you play it yeah. Um, I think it helps because it's the stand's pretty close to the actual pitch as well, which which helps a lot. Yeah, which is an unusual thing for Sheffield Eagles. We've always had something between stands and the pitch. It's not whether it's been a dog track, running track, something. <laughs> There's always been something between us. It's, it's it's like a rare thing now. It's so close. So yeah. So it's I remember, great. I remember Don Valley days when you needed a binocular to see pitch. <laughs> Yeah, I remember them days. It's good. <laughs> I think Gary Edinson once said, "Oh, do you think we should sell binoculars as a as a way for fans to see the game?" I thought, uh, "No, that will be taking the Mickey somehow." <laughs> but I remember Chef Regal's binoculars were going to be on order at some point. Don't know well, why, but just another... needed, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, good evening, Mark. As well, good evening, Vella. You all right? Evening, everyone. Yes. Um, uh, thanks again, Blake, for joining us. It's uh, great of you to give up some of your time to um, uh, to speak to us. Thanks once again. Uh, we've been uh, flooded with questions. Uh, we usually put a thread out saying any questions. I don't think we've ever had so many. So um, no beats Mark. Yeah. It's yeah. the record. It's the record one tonight. This is more than yeah. that. More than our cast and when he came on and anything. So. Yeah, before, not... before we hit the uh, fan questions, we'll just talk a little bit about yeah. the background for people who may not know. So obviously, no introduction uh, to to you and and your dad needed. We all we all knew who your dad is uh, Eagles legend, lifted the true, lifted the Challenge Cup. You know what else is there to say? It, it's fair to say, was rugby league in your blood from an early age? And were you ever destined to play any other game than this? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is probably no surprise. I would, I've had a rugby ball in man probably since before I could even walk. Um, I think like you were just mentioning off air when my dad moved to Halifax, I think I was maybe, uh, I'll have been about two months old and I've still got a kit from Halifax, <laughs> I've got a full, a full kit from being two months old, so I've always had a ball in my hand um, and I think it's always been, you know, something that we never really question. I played football for a little bit when I was younger just with my mates, but when it came to make a decision between rugby and football, it were a bit of a no-brainer really where I was going to go. Um, so yeah, I, don't, I can't ever remember a point in my life when I hadn't been playing or training rugby, apart from COVID, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So, what junior team did you play for before? Obviously, you went to the uh, adult ranks. Uh, where did you do your do your junior uh, playing? So, I started in my early days down at Ilfbrook, um, mm -hmm. very early days, and then 
think I wore about um, six or seven-ish, I think. Um, I went up and played up in Leeds for Alton Raiders. Um, and then I played for Alton Raiders then from being about seven right through and ended up actually playing a season in their open age as well before I came back to Sheffield. So I was, I was there good probably 10, 12 years. Um, you know, with a with a stint in the in the scholarship at Sheffield and, and stuff like that in between. Yeah, brilliant, That's brilliant. It's, it's, it's a great story. It's the homegrown yeah. talent again, isn't it? Which uh, sadly we're lacking. So um, yeah, Dino, let's uh, let's fire in the questions. We've got we've okay. got to get through. Right. Well, very soon, play. Uh, Katie, Mrs. Sheffrey Eagles herself. She said, "Do you ever watch old games of your dad playing and think you play a similar game to him?" When I watch you running with the ball, it's honestly, it's like watching your dad. I thought I had a bit more footwork in with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, to be honest, only game I can ever really remember watching, probably, you know, Sprague, yeah, but it's a Wembley 98. Yeah. I can remember watching that. Um, and I've seen odd clips of my dad here and there playing for England and stuff like that. Um, but I can't say we've ever really sat down and, and watched a full game. He, uh, I think my dad's a bit too humble to, to do that, to be fair. Yeah. Well, he is the record. He is in the history books as the first player to score a try for Sheffield Eagles in the first division when we he got also, promoted. Yeah, he also told me his first player to score a try at Hillsborough. Yep, at Hillsborough football. Sure ground, yeah. And he made sure I know that it were an half length for under sticks as well. Yes, it was actually because the video was <laughs> on a YouTube about it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the one he played against Widnes when they were world champions. That's on YouTube when we beat them thirty-one six. And uh, it was great, great times, great times watching that. But we didn't have a home. Gee, what a what this deja vu here. <laughs> Hold on, what's going on here? Didn't have a home in that season as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, your dad used to be, every time we used to get the ball, he was like, "Oh, here we go," <laughs> straight forward. That was it. <laughs> and uh, Mick Cook was always on his side. But uh, oh, fantastic times to watch him. It was amazing. But yeah, if Katie says there's some, there's a similarity, then oh my god, you're in you're in trouble now. <laughs> uh, Tasha replied to that and said, even, even how he stands with his hands on his hips is just like his dad. I don't know about that. I best not be caught with my hands on my hips. Hopefully that's not when I'm playing. <laughs> and she also says, Katie, oh, there's a few, a few questions here. Who is the toughest player you've come up against in a Super League side and championship? Um, it's a tough one, that. I mean, I think the toughest opponent in recent memory is definitely probably uh, Blake Ferguson for Lee. Um, just watch, watching him run bowling, it's you can just see, you know. I mean, we were like a year ago or whatever, we were playing sort of state of origin rugby. Um, so I'd say he's probably one of the toughest that I've sort of been on, on field with. Um, other than that, I think, you know, earlier in the season, Hull FC, we were playing, then they're, they're a big physical pack. Um, and that, that were a tough one. Um, but individual player, I, I'd probably say Blake Ferguson. Yeah. Do you think Lee will go up? Yeah, I think. I think it's pretty much at that stage now. I think um, they've recruited really well. <laughs> you know, <laughs> even from when we first played them, it's, it, the team's improved tenfold. Um, so I don't think there'll be any, unless there's some massive upsets, which can happen. Um, I think it's leads to lose now, if I'm honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she says, oh, Katie again. She's got some of my questions here. <laughs> She's going, uh, who do you look up to? Uh, that's an easy one, my dad. Yeah. Um, it's always been my dad growing up and stuff and he's always sort of been my coach as well throughout from amateur right through um, even now really he's like my coach now you know I'll, I'll speak with Tubbs and I'll speak with Jeddah and people like that but um, first port of call after every game is always to go and see my dad and see what he thinks and see how I've gone and stuff like that so definitely my dad Awesome uh, we always saying about we should have a father versus sons game at Sheffield Eagles because we've got that many and things like that I thought oh, God, that'd be a bad game that one I'd like to think we win, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were decided to cure two other week, and he went, Oh, well done. No, no, no. I said, Well, if we can get Phoenix on loan next year, he went, uh, Yeah, please don't. No, not this year. <laughs> so we, we'd, this, have this... Play, we'd have to play Masters for Tubbs and that. He'd have to be in his gold shorts. Oh, I've got, excuse <laughs> me. I've got to wear gold shorts. I wear the gold shorts. Um, so. Uh, I can't wait for it at Hillsborough Oaks when they're still another this Masters team. I can't wait. I think it's going to be a brilliant thing. It's going to be the best thing. I'll, get, me, I'll get my dad to come down and play. Oh, get your dad to coaches, never mind players. It'd be, definitely be like old times. <laughs> It'd definitely be old times then with, with your dad and Bitter and Tubby talk coaching us. 
It'll be great for I'll, I'll have a word with him and see what he's doing. <laughs> uh, do you have any rituals before the game? I don't. I was thinking, I saw this question and I've been thinking, and I don't have a single <laughs> one really. Um, I sort of eat the same food. Um, you know, I'll have, I have wheat a bit, but I have them every morning, not, not just play out, wheat a bit. And then um, my pull with my only ritual is that I'll have two coffees every day, every, before every game. I'll have two coffees um, about three hours before my food, and that's it, really. Um, I'm not really like some players have some proper, you know, like proper superstitions and stuff like that, but I've never really, never really had any of them. Yeah. Other than like maybe I couldn't play if I forgot my gum shield or anything, I, won't be, I don't think I'd be able to play without stuff like that. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that counts as a superstition, really. Yeah. I think no, I don't think that's a superstition. It's just it's just one of the things you're just used to. Yeah, it. just I just feel too yeah. weird without it now. Yeah. Yeah. Kieran Rooney asks, How do you feel now? Tank is closed. Devastated. What is tank? It might be a nightclub. A night, I, I think I know this. It's a nightclub, isn't it? Near the Odeon in Sheffield. Yeah, it's uh it's a nightclub, yeah. Um it's more just an underground box. Um, it's very warm, um, but yeah, it's, I'm, not, I'm not Tank's biggest fan to be honest with you. It's uh, it's an interesting place, full of interesting people. <laughs> Night, yeah, nightclubs used to be full of interesting people, if I remember rightly. <laughs> we, don't, we don't judge on this show. No, no. <laughs> all, and I know a few ex players that I've seen in nightclubs doing crazy things on that dance floor. That's all I'm saying. Their names will <laughs> hey, stay yeah, then. Yeah. Their names will stay amongst my brain. I'm not telling anybody about that one. I'm trying to remember, Blake. Did you go to Canada when we played uh, Toronto? I didn't. No, I were on loan at Hemel. Um, ah, right. I didn't get. Yeah. I got to go to Hemel instead. Um, yeah, after the uh, after the game in the uh, well bar pub, whatever it was, there was a few uh, adventures. Uh, nothing we could <laughs> talk about, but yeah, quite quite the thing. I don't remember a great deal about that. It's because of them eight percent ciders at the game. I ended up drinking, but. Uh, that was that was something special. So, yeah. do you have like a, a favorite game you've played for the club so far? Um, obviously, Wembley is 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 what it is. But uh, do you have like a favorite one? Uh, you know, where you look back and think that was it. That was brilliant. That's what I can. You know, that's what it can be. Um, I think when you play the teams like your Leeds and stuff like that, your team in this league with big crowds, I think that's sort of a bit of a uh, you know you it's. It, you go to the to places like Lee and you get a big crowd behind them and stuff like that, like, you know, and it, it can open your eyes a little bit. But in terms of individual games, I know it's 1895 again, but I think probably the semi-final um, were just as special um, as final, I'd say. I think, because um, it were, you know, we put a real effort in um, and it were down at the OLP as well and stuff like that. So I think when we got to Wembley, it got, and it was sunk in that day, you know, that this is, we've done it now, we're there. Um, I think that were a pretty special day and probably one of my favourite games that we've played in. It's brilliant. That was a fantastic day. Um, I remember everybody was... No, I don't know about you lot, but all the fans were just like, oh, no, don't blow it now after all that hard work. Because in the uh, in the quarterfinal, we'd come back from the dead against Doncaster. And then, obviously, we got the home semi against Diaretico, the easiest team. And we're all thinking, come on, Eagles, don't, don't, don't blow this. Funny little anecdote, I was actually with Matt James and Corey Macklin, when the draw was done, and we knew we'd got Batley, and Matt just sat there like he does, just grinning, and Corey was like, yes, yes, we've got to, like, shut up, you've got to win the game, you've got to win the game, go and win the game, oh, it's all for no. So, um, I agree with you on that, that was quite, that was a brilliant event, brilliant day, that one, for everything, you know, for what we achieved, and and I think the approach that we had towards it was great as well, because they didn't score for pretty much the entire game, I think we kept them very low, didn't we? It was only, only about two or six points. Yeah, I think um, I think after we won, um, after we beat uh, Don Donny, I think we were at Fev right in the last yeah, second. Yeah. I kind of had a bit of a feeling like it were sort of a bit like, yeah, I think we're going to go all the way. And I think that's you know that you have these moments you think that's a bit of destiny because yeah. if I remember right, there I think the same thing happened um, in the '98 Cup run. I think did they come from behind to beat Salford or someone like that? Yeah, right? yeah, semi final. Um, yeah. I remember my dad saying the same thing that you sort of come off pitch and you think it's a little bit of uh, you know destiny at play here a little bit. Um, and I definitely got that feeling after that Donny game. You know we we were shocking that day. We def they definitely deserved to win and go through, but we found a way and got to yeah. into into Atford next round. And then I thought I think we can go away here. 
Yeah, there's a great photo of your dad after that semi-final. He's crying his eyes out on the pitch, hugging John and John Henderson. I remember he's got like that, and the, and the caption, and everybody was saying, "Hey, Paul, were you all right that day?" He went, there was something in my eye. I was just so emotional. It was I weren't crying though. I weren't crying. I went, yeah, okay, but so uh, oh, great day that one. Um, uh, what else we got here? Da, 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 da. Michael White, do you have any ambitions of playing in Super League, or are you happy at the level that you're playing at the moment? Um. I'd only have an ambition to play in Super League if it were Sheffield. Um, you know, I'd want, I'd want to sort of go all the way with Sheffield. I would. I don't think I'd, um, you know, I've got a decent career behind me and stuff like that. So it's the only sort of plausible way that I would be interested is with Sheffield. And who knows, hopefully one day um, it might be a reality. Yeah. Uh... Hold on there, what's it? Da, 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 da. Baz Gascoigne, interests outside rugby? Um, it takes up that much of my time. I don't really have time for any others. Um, probably, you know, um, just sport in general, really. You know, football, American football, um, anything like that, really. I love my sport. I'll sit and watch that when I'm not playing and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, what's your team on American football again? I forgot uh, this. Uh, Tampa. Oh, come on, really? Yeah. Oh, give me a break here. You're not one of those follows I've supported them. I've supported them since, we've had, since we were shocking. Um, I mean, we've, my mum and dad have got um, a villa in America, uh, in, in Florida, so we go, we go over there a lot. So whenever we could, we go over and watch Tampa. So I've been watching Tampa since um, we had the unfortunate um, scenario of having Jamais Winston at quarterback. Um so it was quite nice to see Tom Brady come and actually win something for once. I'll tell you straight, if Steelers are playing in Tampa in a few years, I'll go over and cut Tampa and then I'll we'll meet up with you guys and we'll, we'll do, do a Tampa Steelers game. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, or Pittsburgh, even do Pittsburgh. I can do Pittsburgh easy and show people everything. It'll take about 10 minutes, <laughs> but I'll show people everything in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Uh, I'm a I'm a 49er because they play red and gold get, and, get, uh, and and I went there and I went there on honeymoon and it's incredible so I took the 49ers I know they're rubbish but you know it's what oh, it you, is. you weren't far off a couple of years back no very close but you know <clears> twice <throat> there's two Super Bowl losses in five years so it'll come eventually yeah I think you might have to be in a bit of a re rebuild phase now though you might be going in a few years it's you get these super yeah. teams that come in I think now you know yeah. you look at some of your teams yeah. now like the yeah, yeah. Um, your yeah. rounds of like that will be tough to knock them off now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We'll see what happens this year. Uh, ITV just announced coverage as well. So, anyway, forget NFL. We're, people are coming in going, Hold on, why are they talking Tampa Bay and 49ers here? What's going on? Uh, who's the loudest in the changing room? Baz Gascoigne wants to know. That's Baz an easy one now. Q, Q, Q's, def Q's definitely the loudest. Yeah, uh, it's good though, it, you need it sometimes, you know. Especially when you have these uh, tough results after the game, you know you need them. You need characters like Q in team um, who pick everyone up. Um, you know because some when especially your games like Barrow ones, games like that where you've come really close to winning and you've just lost at last hurdle, it can be tough. Um, but people like Q and that who can just lift room and you know just funny people, it really helps. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Q was hilarious. hilarious. It was so funny on here, weren't it, Mark? It was just like... It, it, it was great. Telling <laughs> the right stories, yeah. Oh. Does he still, does he still sing? Yeah, does he still sing in the dressing room? Um, I've seen him dancing a lot. I can't remember him singing. I'll ask him, though, next next, next <laughs> home game. Ask, we'll him him about, ask him about the flight back from Toulouse with Missy and Menze. I don't need to say any more. You never got Menze singing. <laughs> no, what we had, well, I'll just say, we had we had Q and Missy singing some, I think it was some Maori song, and it was brilliant. Menzi just decided to commandeer the drinks trolley and we're giving everybody cups of ice. It was the longest two hours of my life coming back from Toulouse, though. <laughs> Good memories, though. Brilliant, brilliant <laughs> times, yeah. We, might, we yeah. might get them again next year. I know it's looking that way, isn't it? It's, uh... Are you looking... Are you forward to that going going abroad to play play to play for the eagles like to play is, is that yeah when we played when yeah. we played to lose in 2019 i went over and it was a really good weekend ah. really enjoyed that um so it's i kind of want them to do well in super league but at the same time we're like if you want to have a away day in wakefield or an away day in toulouse um and it's not really a close call <laughs> no, it isn't. oh i remember them changing rooms in wakefield Oof. never again 
be fair, yeah. we've only been whenever we played a couple of games there, like last year and that, we were only ever in home change rooms and they're really nice. Um, so we've not had to experience away ones, and it's looking like we were after now, either. And I think they've just managed to escape it by looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah fingers crossed. Let's see what happens with it. But uh, I think there's another twist to turn to go in this Super League thing. I know it's getting close to the end of the season, but I think there's one more little twist to come. I think it might be this weekend. Who knows? I mean, Saints have got it all we- worked, wrapped up with yeah, Shield, they- haven't they? Really. The only possible thing is that it's Saints to lose on the last day. And if Saints have already topped, they might oh. phone in the semi-finals, you know what I mean? So that's the only thing that might do it. If 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 there's a shout out last day, they might they might do it. But was, I think I think Wakefield's got Uddersfield, aren't they? And they they're yeah. gonna need it to be yeah. potentially top four. So yeah. it's and, you're right, there might there'll be another twist. And and Wakefield got to play to lose yet. Is that a, is that a fun in the last three weeks? I don't know. I, don't it's just... on me. I can look on no, it. I'm no. using my phone no. for this, so I can't look. Uh, anyway, Bas Gascoigne asking, who's got the worst music taste? Uh, I don't know, to be fair. <laughs> I wouldn't say anyone's got particularly bad music taste, because if they have, then they don't get to go on speaker. Um, so I wouldn't say anyone particular. Um, it's usually just sort of facts or homes who control music, I think, in change rooms. It's usually all right. Um <laughs> So I couldn't really tell you, to be honest. Whoever it is, they're yeah. keeping it a secret. Yeah, one from me. How good was that impersonation of Tubby by Keith Senior other week that made a video? When he, when he, when he did that impersonation. The whole, just what's on the video and he just did this impersonation of Tubby, which was just hilarious. I mean, yeah, I think, I was... uh, there's quite a few good impressions of Tubby around Chagey Rooms. <laughs> Who does the best one? Uh, I think Ev, Ev does a good one. <laughs> Evan does a really good one. Uh, it's it's more when he's angry, Tubby. It's really easy to do a good Tubby impression when you're when he's angry. <laughs> I've seen that. <clears throat> I've seen his anger. He tried being his kit man. I, I think I was kit man for his alliance side in in late nineties. My God, was he mad at me a couple of times? And I only forgot one for shit. It just went crazy. No, poor poor Bri. I think Bri Bri's in it that long now. He's got oh, it figured out that back of his hand. Oh, Brian's a legend. Brian's an absolute legend of that club. He, he deserves. Brian, he deserves Brian's, it. Brian's my shout for Eagles Hall of Fame. I think absolutely. He's a, he's a legend. He's Brian. Absolutely. He's proper unsung hero at club. Definitely. Uh, today we'll get some new live ones. Tasha says, "Tasha, oh well, here we go. Do you argue with your coach much? Ha 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 ha. I, d- I don't really. The only time I ever have any disagreements with Tubbs is when uh, is when I answer him back. Uh, which which is only ever time when we've ever had any, any crosswords is when he says something on the training field and I'll and I'll answer him back and then he'll he'll pull me afterwards and bollock me. Um, other than that, no, not really. Um, oh, not have many not have many crosswords, especially not this season that I can remember. Um, all all last season to be fair, so I'm doing all right on that front for now. Touch wood. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Craig Short says you love a good dance beans on a Saturday night. I do. That's why I like Friday <laughs> so much. Uh, Michael White asks apart from the mighty Eagles is there a rugby league side you support um, there isn't really to be honest um, I, I won't, I'll stick rugby on whenever it's on but I won't say I, I go out of my way to support um, mm. any any one team really mm. um, I've probably because my dad coached there so probably got a little bit of a soft spot for Wakey to be fair um, that's probably about it though yeah have an uh, NRL side. Sorry, sorry. Do you have an NRL side? Do you watch any NRL? No, that's another thing. I never really. I watch highlights, but I never really sit down and watch a game. I always just think they're, they're always on it really all the times it's there, um, yeah. and I can never. When when you do train so much and, and play so much, I think you get to a point where you've sort of had your your fill of rugby league, um, and it's nice to switch off from it and you know and watch something else or do something else. Um, it's easy to consume um, for it just to consume your life. But Penrith just got the minor premiership this morning. They beat Souths. So that's that's one of the things out of the way. So we know Penrith won't win it because every time somebody gets the minor premiership, they don't get the grand final. So uh, that's Penrith out. Uh, Tasha says, watch Blake grow up literally. And got to say, I am so proud of how you're playing this year. You're absolutely ripping it up. Yeah, try to score a super. Try to score a yes, extraordinaire, uh- isn't it? I know I keep getting lucky. I don't. I just keep ending up at the right place at the right time. Especially that one against London. Um, I was just chasing kick down and then next minute ball in hands and I were over the line. Um, so I don't know how that happened. Um, but I'll I'll keep taking them while they're coming because they'll soon stop. 
I remember my, my first season when I uh, in that 2018 season, I had a few at the same way. Um, I just kept getting lucky bounces at the ball and I kept managed to score. So I'll keep yeah. taking them while they're coming. Yeah. Uh, Daniel says, who's the fastest player in the team? Um, I don't know. I think probably Bish. Uh, or Ben Shields, young lad. Ben's fast. We haven't really seen Ben run properly, but Ben looks fast. Um, be an interesting one to have a race and see. Um, don't think we've ever seen, especially going full like full length at pitch. I don't think we've ever seen it in training. Um, but I think Bish is Bish is rapid. Um, struggle to catch Bish. Mm. Or Holmes, to be fair, Holmes is pretty fast. Yeah. Oh, to answer your question, Kieran, Red. We had this conversation earlier about which is the favourite Eagles show, <laughs> and it's Red. Yeah. It's the Red yeah. one. It's the Red one. Uh, right. Hold on. If you could change your nickname. What would it be and why? Oh, I couldn't change it now. I'm too attached to it. <laughs> Worst part is, is when me and my dad are in the same room. If someone to chat beans and we'll both just go like that and turn around and try to work out who it is. Oh. Only person that doesn't really call me beans is Tubby. And that's because to Tubby, uh, beans is my dad. Yeah. I get called Blake by Tubby. That's it. Everyone else calls me beans. Yeah. And any new player that comes in, I have to spend a couple of minutes explaining why I'm called beans. <laughs> I know how he originally got that nickname, your dad as well, because it was Howard Cartwright that gave him the nickname Bings. And I don't, I, it just came up and all of a sudden Paul just turned up and all of a sudden Howard just went, all right, Bings. And that's where it came from, because he just no, went, it, it, went. I, yeah, I, I understand where it's come from, but it still yeah. doesn't really make sense to me. I was like, <laughs> wow, why is it? It was meant that connection. So it must have been very bored. <laughs> yeah. oh, broad beans and then it just broad bent broad beans that's how we, how we, we, that's how we all got the connection that was the only way we ever thought about it broad bent Someone broad beans like, that was oh, it. Is it, are you called beans is there a movie character that you look like or something I was like no I was like, <laughs> when I was younger I were mini beans um, and now I'm just beans yeah so yeah it's Howard Cartwright that christened your dad for beans if I remember yeah, rightly my dad's, my dad's told me the story and <laughs> how it just stuck you can't get rid of it yeah. <coughs> oh, our car right is another one that should be in the Hall of Fame just for the, the yeah. work he did absolutely mm. by a mile just for yeah, his it still, it still comes down to games now does Howard oh, um, I, I wish I could see him right right on game day I've seen I've seen a few players on the end of his rants and uh, he can turn the air all white really pale blue with the amount of <laughs> words that come out of his mouth never 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 voice men men his words did Mr Cartwright ever <laughs> Dear yeah, me, he was evil. Uh, Daniel Burtz asks, what's the best moment of your career so far? Oh, that's an easy one, just Wembley. Uh, Where's just your shirt? The whole, the whole weekend, right from stepping on coach Friday morning to um, being back in New Barrett Tavern on Sunday, I think the entire weekend's best um, best moment of my career. And, um, you know, it'll be tough to top. I mean, there's only one way of topping it and it's going back and winning Challenge Cup. Or winning, a, you know, I don't think, uh, or winning a grand final or, you know, something like that. But I think playing at Wembley and stuff like that and doing what we did um, were special. Whenever someone comes on who played at Wembley that day, we always ask, do you have a story or a little thing that's not in the public domain that you'd love to share? Um, I can't really think of one, to be fair. It's all just a bit of a, it all just blends into one, really. Um, I can't think of one specific moment. Um, apart from um, you know just everyone being out afterwards uh, in Watford that were an experience you know all coaching staff and everything um, it was just a top weekend um, and I can't think of one particular story but um, I'll never forget the weekend as a whole brilliant oh. Oh. Yeah. where's the jersey where's your jersey it's it's a folded up in me uh, in my bedroom um, tucked away in, in a bag. I ain't got around to framing it yet. Um, I've got medal and shirt there ready to be framed um, and, and hung up. But yeah, it's all nice and safe and packed away. Yeah, there's memories. Their memories will last forever. And that medal and that shirt will be it. And it's an iconic thing for the Eagles anyway. And it's iconic just like that and it, on its own. So be yeah, putting I've got a little uh, after game. Um, I remember we were all after we were all celebrating, we were all got a show to show going back in. I remember looking over and seeing Paddy Burns on the floor scratching about on Wembley. I went, What are you doing? He went, I'm getting some Wembley turf. I went, Go get a bottle and we'll get some. So I've got a little a little water bottle and we've got a lot of Wembley grass in it. 
I mean, you know, we might never, it might never get to come back here, but we've got some Wembley turf now, and it's a good point. <laughs> oh. Love it. That's brilliant. <clears throat> That's brilliant. Yeah, that is outstanding. I remember we, with his mascot, he was just blown away the fact that we had so little fans, but he was so gracious, the Wembley, the Winders mascot, and he was great. Uh, I just thought it was one of my favourite memories, just messing around with the witness mascot and how warm it was, but how well that Wembley looked after us was just outstanding. So that's one of my favourite yeah. memories. I remember when, when we scored uh, in that second half, we were, as a as a prop, one of the more interesting uh, things as a prop is that you're always on back line from a kickoff, so you're always close mm-hmm. to their fans. Um, and I remember, I think, it were fans scored just after half time to tie it or just put it in front of them. We scored like a length at range try. Um, that put us in front and I remember walking back behind sticks after that try and it was just silent you couldn't hear a word all you could hear were all Eagles fans at the other end but you couldn't hear anything <laughs> from the corner and there were a lot of them there but I think they'd all just been I think up to half time before they got it in bag um, so I think they were all just there a bit stunned we, me, me and Mark said when, when we played Witness at the OLP and they went 12 nil up so I went it's all right, we've got this. And he goes, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. I went, it happened at Wembley. We've got this in the bag, mate. No worries. It's 12 nil up. And everybody that was at Wembley went, yeah, it's all right. They're 12 nil up, but we'll get them back. It's all Wembley all over again. And look what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to say it happened again. Yeah. Uh, Tasha says, who, is a, who has, as a player, has been the most influential to you? Um, that's, that's a tough one, actually. Um, there's quite a few players in that, in that early season, um, when I were a young lad who sort of took took me under the wing, um, like Matt, Matty Fozard and Ollie Davis and Matty James and, and local lads, um, you know, and like this season, you know, like Dicko and people like that have really helped me um, bring me on. And, you know, just when, when you know, when you're struggling a little bit or you've had a bad game, whatever, just people that come over and pick you up a little bit and get behind you and support you. I think they're, they might not notice it, but it's pretty big as a young lad. Because sometimes you can go out there and have a really shocking game. Big world's going to end, but having that support when you get back in changing rooms and stuff is is massive. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Burt, hold on. It's the, it's the Burt, it's the Burt quest, question shows this one. <laughs> uh, what did you make to Tubby's speech after Wembley at the new Barrack Tavern? Mm. Um, I've heard remember about this. To the, do you, to the point, do you remember it? <laughs> I, I can remember it and I'll make sure that Tubby remembers it as well. Uh, I'm not going to let him forget <laughs> It won't be hard for him to forget it because it was only one word. He just kept saying, wow. Shit, mate, wow. Wow. That's all I remember. Yeah. How were they? There were some, uh, there were some broken bodies uh, that day. Yeah. Ollie Davies gave me a hug and uh, I nearly broke two ribs. He was that drunk. Uh, oh, what, a, <laughs> what, a, what an afternoon that were. Yeah. Uh, that summarised yeah. summarised Eagles, really, didn't it? You know, everyone coming back to one, one place. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I think, you know, when you have, you've got such a passionate fan base that might be a bit biggest. I think you, them intimate moments when, you know, if you're at another club that's a bit bigger, you don't get to have that same moment or that same closest with fan and player connection, really. So I think, um, you know, so far that's pretty special. It was great that the club sort of brought the trophy and let the fans get the photo with it, you know. And they did that when we won the grand finals as well. If Wednesday ever won anything, God forbid, the last time they did win something, I think it was a playoff, you could have your photo took with it, cost you 10 quid, you weren't allowed to touch it. But, you know, we've got that closeness for what we, yeah. for what we do. And, and that witness, they'd got like their bar in their ground plan. They'd got it all set up for their winning party. Yeah. And literally they walk back in the next day like they were coming out of a funeral. And literally there's like mm. hundred people in a pub back garden. That's that's mm. that that's what does it for me. I absolutely yeah. love that about our club. I like you say, there's that intimacy between the club and the and the passionate fan base. And I I, I think that's one of the best things about us and the sport of rugby league. Yeah. And I think it's what you know, when you get new fans that come down, I think it's stuff like that that um, you know, you can support um a bigger club, you can go support, you know, a Super League club or like the Leeds Rams or whatever, but you'll never get that connection or that closeness that you'll get down at Eagles. Yeah. Are you watching the cricket game? And is it this weekend? This cricket game or next weekend? Uh, yes, I'll be going to watch my dad <laughs> get caught out because there's absolutely no chance that my dad can play cricket. No chance. He just better <laughs> roll if he gets a six or a four because he's not making it to other wickets. They'll have two. They'll have two days to get it to wickets to get him out. Oh, I'm, I've given all my gear away. Otherwise, they could have borrowed it. I've been playing. I've, I've retired this year. I've retired. I've played cricket for about twelve years, and I've retired, so I ain't got any of my gear anymore. They could have borrowed everything. 
Um, no, the best get practices, I reckon. Footy, I think <laughs> footy lads, I reckon they'll they'll be decent. At it, oh. I bet. Oh, it'll be a great fun. I wish I could. I wish I was nearby. I wish I could have gone, but uh, obviously not. Yeah, uh, good, good day. Yeah, great day. Uh, Daniel Burst asking, oh yeah, I think I'm, we think we might know this one. Best moment of your career so far? Yeah, I think we know that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think when we look back to that year, I mean, you two know about this morning, me, because me being down south and something, I wish I could have got to the games, but I didn't. How did you feel? I mean, was there something in the air from like the moment that it started, like when you got through the first couple and then the moment it was like the quarterfinals, did, did you both know then, then hey, there's something going on here, we could do this? Was it something um, that then Wembley... We're a little bit, it was a little bit of an un- unknown for us, really. I, I remember it being a little bit of a nuisance because a lot of the early rounds were sort of played on Wednesday nights and stuff like that. Um, so it was tough. You know, there were a lot of weeks where you play, because we didn't have any Friday games then, so you'd be playing Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday um, in a lot of early rounds, which were tough. Um, and some of them were away. I mean, I think we played... I can't remember what round, but we played Halifax over at Keithley. And yeah. Keithley's like a good hour and a hour and a half from from Sheffield. So, you know, there were a lot of tough, a tough nights where you might the games might not have been tough, but when you're backing it up from a Sunday, it was tough. So I, I remember that. But like I said earlier, I mean, just from that Donny game, really, that's when I thought that we had we were going to go on all the way and at least get to Wembley. Yeah, that was pretty much it for us on the stand because for, but you you were right for for an hour we weren't even anywhere near that game and then it all it all just clicked and that one on in the last minute I heard the ref shout ninety minute ninety seconds left when we had a scrum down and like at the bottom of the hill and we were kicking up and Zach said to me if this goes and we win we're going to Wembley and we're going to win it and Senior went yes we are and then it went. And then literally that night, we were looking at train tickets to Wembley, you know, train to London, because we thought, we book them now, we'll get a good price. And if we don't get there, then we're only like 30 quid out of pocket. And I think we did book them before semi-final, in case, you know, thinking that we were going to yeah. do it, we were that confident. And then when we got the home draw against Batley, we thought, we're never going to get a better shot at this. And um, and yeah, I, I agree with you entirely, Blake. I think that when we won that set quarter against Doncaster in the last second, I think that's when click we thought we can do this, we're going to go and do this. Yeah, that's exactly how I felt. Um, obviously, quietly, kept it to myself a little bit because you don't want to jinx it, but um, it's little turning points like that sometimes in seasons and games that um, sort of make you think that um, that it's destiny a little bit to get there. We thought that with 98. We, when I think what it was, we'd never been past the second round of the cup. That was the thing. And when we when we got past Lee in the second round, we got to quarterfinals, and then we was on telly for the first time, and it was against Cass, the famous Keith Senior, Barry, Barry John Mather punch and knocked him out that that game. And when we and we got to that, and I said on the coach because I was being the mascot that day, and I just said, if we win this, we can win. We're going. We're going to this. But John Kerr turned up at the preseason and said we're going to Wembley this year. Everybody said he's on drugs. What's he on this bloke? And why is he saying we're going to Wembley? But all of a sudden, this momentum started building. And then all of a sudden, when they're semi-final, four teams in the in the hat, London, Wigan, Salford, Eagles, every single person was saying, don't give us Wigan. We'll beat them at Wembley. And we yeah. just said, we want Salford or London. And we got Salford. And we said, right, now we're getting them. And it just went from there. And as soon as we, as soon as we beat Salford, we went, yeah, we're having this. And my best memory, seeing your dad, bouncing up and down in that tunnel before the start, just looking straight ahead and everybody chanting 98. And he's just yeah. looking straight ahead. And you look at him and Andy Farrell, and it's the greatest memory I've got. And you think, who's the most nervous looking at that picture? And it wasn't the lad in the blue shirt, I'm telling you straight. It was Andy Farrell straight across from him. My dad telling me stories about like the lead-up to the game and stuff. And how I think um, Sheffield had got like a, a sports psychologist in talking to players. And um, yeah. I think they were like just this... Like belief, really. Like even though everyone else, every other person at the stadium were wearing an Eagles shirt, were yeah. thinking they were Wigan. Um, it only really matters what them seventeen so it's all think. Yeah. And if they Especially think they're yeah. the going to go and win it, then it doesn't matter what everyone else thinks. Yeah, um, I think that yeah. proved it. Yeah, walking around Wembley Stadium and seeing the bookmakers offering 33 to one against Sheffield Eagles to win that game, it was like, oh come on, whoa, get a fiver quick. And most <laughs> of us went to this bookmaker and went, get getting money on him now. 33 to 1 against Eagles. Come on. And then when we won. But he struggled to find him after the game. Oh, we all ran like crazy. <laughs> we, we were all jumping up and down going, we won the cup. And then we went, 
bookmakers and flew straight out. I think we missed about the parade around the cup. We were just trying to grab the money from the bookmakers <laughs> because we all said we're going to have one hell of a night tonight. And then the hotel gave us a free bar, which was the stupidest thing of all time. Giving the, the Eagles on the night they've won the cup a free bar. It was just pandemonium that night in that hotel. That's I all can I can remember. <laughs> I bet this Fantastic some story night. Yeah, I've got some stories about that night as well. <laughs> uh, oh, here we go. Hold on there. Oh, we've missed a few here. Hold on. Katie says, does it bother you that there are not that many of us when we turn up to an event like that at the Wembley after Wembley at New Barrick? Does it bother uh, you? No, because it only matters the people who are there. Um, you know, it's it's about the, the loyal fans who turn up week in, week out um, and sort of them games where you're winning at Wembley and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I think... It'd be, I'd rather just have the fans who, you know, the, the really loyal fans, you know, who, who have supported us through thick and thin and stuff like that, um, than just a bunch of people turn up who've, you know, got no no real association. Do you know what I mean? Like, they've not, you know, you could you could pack it out, but I think having those loyal fans there, um, that's what really matters. Yeah, yeah. Uh what is this? Billy Pete says, Donny away at Featherstone, 1979th minute winner. Was pretty mental to see. So he says that and everything. And uh, Billy Pete asks, what do you think to your LP facilities and atmosphere? <clears throat> yeah, the, the Megan out facilities at OLP. Uh, like I say, when, when we first went down in 2018, we were literally getting changed in PE changing rooms in school um, and walking out and stuff. Um, and now it's the old JD room's got a warm up area, and you know it's got everything you could want. It's such such a professional setup now, um, and I think I was saying to talk over week. It's you still pinch yourself being able to get in and have a shower after training because I've been at Sheffield now five years, and this is first time that we've been able to um, get in change rooms after we've finished training and have a shower, and just because usually we're we're not got any facilities to do it, um, and like as reviews and stuff like that, all in one place. Um, it's been massive, and I think once we get a full pre-season and a full like season there, um, I think it's going to help us massively. Not even just like that's from a player's perspective. I mean, fans, it must be like just out of this world compared to what they've had to put up with. I'm amazed at the speed of you guys. When we finish the match, when we walk, when we leave the stadium, we go across to the library, and we must be in the library like two minutes, and players are already coming in. I'm like, how fast do they get changed? <laughs> What's going on here? And it's, it's because we've got loads of showers, so we're not all having to wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, from, from the fans' view, yeah, it's just brilliant to not have to, you know, get two trains and a bus and a taxi, or whatever, to get to an own game. You know, Fev and Donny and all that messing about. It's great just to be able to just get there, and it's easy got to as well. Tram, plenty of places to park, trains. It's all nice and it's all nice and easy. And it, we're going to benefit because, as we know. The club get money from sales at the bar and all that. And away there's more away fans come in, so they bring money. So it's only going to benefit the club. So there's people that don't like it, but I think it's fine. You know, it's just great for what we need to do. And we can build on it as we need to yeah. as things get bigger, hopefully. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great, you know, um, like I say, foundation for us to grow. Uh, I mean, even if if you know we, we went and grew as crowd by 20, 30 percent, I mean we'd still we're well within capacity at OLP. And like I say, there's great transport links everywhere. Um, it's easy to get to. And I think the more away fans that come and go, do you know what, this is actually like a decent place to come, um, you know, and talk, I think they'll bring more as well. Um, and yeah, I think it's, re it's a really exciting time. Um, and I'm really excited to see where it's going to keep growing to and see, you know, what, what it can end up like. Okay. Yeah, it seems as uh, this weekend it seems like Keithley are going to get Division Two, well Division One. Sorry, they're going to go up as Division One champions this weekend if they win. So, be interesting to see who comes up with them next year and replaces Workington and Jewsbury if they lose this weekend. They're down. So, uh, oh, is it like, is it Jewsbury's deciding game sort of this weekend? Yeah, well, I think is yeah, it. They're, they're nine points behind with five games to play, so they've got to win them all and hope that. Whoever I think it's Whitehaven lose them all, which is not going to happen, frankly. So uh, they're they're going to go down as well, and we won't miss them at all. Um, so it's looking like Keithley coming up. Do we uh, should we look forward to this weekend? Obviously, witness. Yeah. And you know, we're saying about a big stadium and possibly a well, not necessarily a big crowd, but a crowd. What what's your thoughts going forward into that? 
Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a really tough game. I think the witness side that we played um, on the Monday night at the OLP, um, you know, has been revolutionised a little bit when by John Keir going there. I mean, you look at some of the results that they're getting and teams are pushing close now. Um, you know, I think we're going to have to go there and really perform to his best um, to turn them over. But, you know, like, like I said earlier, I mean, some of the results that we've had in recent weeks, although they might not be, you know, W's on, on score sheet at the end of the game, but we've put in some really good solid performances um, and we've had a you know I mean especially that, that Halifax game when you think about how many games we played it build up to that um, we've now had an extended period period of rest I think we can really go to witness and put his best foot forward and try and turn him over yeah. mm. definitely <laughs> please please win in the 22 years I've been watching Eagles one of the very few places I've not seen us win at is witness we just can't win there. Every time we go, we lose. Please let's win one. Then I can cross it off the list and I can I can wow. sleep happier because it's it's a tough one. Um, I, have we ever won at Witness in the history of the club, the old club, the new club? Have yes, we, ever we have. Won there? Yes, we have. Nineteen ninety. Long time back. So yes. we, we 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 we're due to go there and do them. Yeah. It's the years we got relegated because it was a it was the biggest funniest thing because like we drew at Wigan, we beat Witness at their place. We had some right results and we ended up getting relegated. We couldn't understand it. Uh, but it was the first year at Don Valley Stadium. We had the teething troubles of Don Valley. And yeah. so, uh, that, yeah, so there you go. Stats all the year. I remember that. I remember us beating Witness. Yeah. Um, so, so what else have we got? Oh, oh yeah. So that's been asked as late. What have we got here? Oh, Simon Hunt. Do you prefer NEC or JCT forms? Is that great? That's the... For those who aren't familiar, that's um, construction. I'm a quant my day job's a quantity surveyor, um, and and Sa I think Simon's uh, Simon were a QS as well or, or an estimator. Um, so in answer to that one, uh, JCT. <laughs> Not that it'll mean anything <laughs> better than being Simon, but JCT. Yeah. Oh, Daniel Burt's got a great, great question here. Who's your player of the year so far? Oh yes. Uh, it's got to be facts for me personally. I think. Uh, Fax is instrumental in that team. I mean, so many players have stood up this year. Um, you know, like especially at middles, you know, you got Tyler and and Faz and people like that. And, you know, new lads that have come in have added so much, like Michael, Mikey Wood and, and Kirky and people like that. And I just think entire team's been um it's been a great year to be like involved with the team and got a, such a good group of lads um who were all just mates as well, um, which helps loads. But I think if I had to pick out an individual player, it'd have to be Fax. Hard to disagree. Hard to disagree. The guy is just he he is and we just yeah. orbit him, you know. He he yeah. he's the sun and we just go around him. What a, yeah. we we had a discussion <laughs> a few weeks ago. Is he the best player ever to play for the club? Well, if he isn't, who is? You know, definitely the new club, we think. But um yeah, he, he what an incredible player. And yeah. I don't know how old he is now, thirty five, but he's still absolutely smashing it at this age, you know. He yeah, I was gonna say you'd still be able to probably Come end of season, put an argument in for him, one of the best in champ. Um, you know, and I think it'd be hard to sort of disagree. It's be, I mean, this, you look at teams like Lee and Fevin, teams like that, but um, I think facts would definitely be in that debate for me, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Can we convince him one more year, do you think? Or has he made his mind up definitely? <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's a bit of a taboo subject, I think. Uh, I think Ooh. it's no nobody's sort of mentioning it to him, but. Um, you know, whatever it, whatever he does, um, I think he's been he's been like class for us this year. Absolutely, especially yeah. when we had we had Brendan Lindsay on. One of the, I mean, Mark remembers this when we had Brendan Lindsay on. And they were talking about the potential of it. And he said, "Any plays that you remember?" And he went, "Yeah, I told Tubbs about Anthony Thackeray when he played at Castleford." And he says, "You want to keep your eye on that lad. You want to keep your eye on it because he's going to be mass. He's going to be a great player." And mm -hmm. Ains, look what's happened. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the only got, publicity we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> hey, brilliant. Uh, right. Never known another player read the game so well, says Kate. And yes, he is. It's stacks and everything like that. Oh, uh, what's the worst injury you've had, Kate? She's, hey, she's on a roll now. Mrs. Mrs. Shepherd Eagle, she's on a roll. Um, I've been lucky at like, touch wood with injuries. Uh, last yeah. year, I broke my jaw uh, against Toulouse. Um, so that were a bit oh. bit of an inconvenience, and I missed quite a bit of season. Um, yeah. But probably the worst one with this year against Lee. In that five cup when I split my when I split sort of my head open, um, oh, that yeah. would that would be yeah. oh 
Chuffing brutes in that game. They were oh. proper nasty, that, weren't they? I know that were a proper physical well, game. They only managed we, about 15 minutes. Yeah. Well, we, we, we got it up and we, we stuck it up and they didn't like it. And then that's when brutality started coming yeah. out. Yeah. And yeah. Same old yeah. story with Lee, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Never change. Never change. Uh, Billy P says, How have you mastered the step so well over the years? How have you? <laughs> I won't say I've mastered it by any means, uh, but I don't know. It's just I did from being like um, sort of 15, 16, I've done like quite a bit of like speed training because up to 15, I were quite slow and didn't have much mobility. Yeah. Um, so it's probably just been something that I've worked on and it's yeah. starting to pay me back a little bit. Um, well, actually, I've, I've not mastered it. I've got a long way to go before I can master it. I think I need more, a few more lessons with Q before I can say I've mastered step. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, Pilly says, was that Harrison Hansen who caused the broken jaw? If that uh, was... I can't remember now. I think it was that Dominic Peru and someone else. Yeah. Um, but to, to be fair, like even Lee this year, you know, I, the two like them to lose last year are a bit reminiscent of Lee this year, um, you know, just sort of head and shoulders above competition. Um, but they're always a good, you know, whenever you finish and stuff, they're always really, you know, like good good lads when you speak to them after mm-hmm. games stuff like that, all come up and ask how you are if you're alright stuff like that. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't say there's any arrogance about them or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I think it was Dominic Peru and I can't remember who other one were. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I think they just clashed clashed shoulders and heard it crack and tackle and knew just mm-hmm. what, started walking to the doctor yeah. straight away. Yeah. Who does the hardest hits when they're tackling? Is it so I've played against? No, who are you playing playing with? Was the, uh, was the Dougie took it this year. Dougie's got a knack for it this year. Um, <laughs> it just comes out of nowhere. It's like a train. Uh, one minute he's next to it in line, the next minute he's laying someone out flat. Yeah. Um, oh, we've got to wish happy birthday to him as well. Happy birthday. Happy yeah. birthday. Dougie, Dougie's, Dougie's birthday, I think it were yesterday or the day before, and then yeah. Tyler's birthday is today. Oh, today. Yeah. yeah, Tyler's, yes, that's it. Sorry. They're all coming now thick, thick and fast now. Uh, yeah. Have you got a holiday plan for end of season? Uh, yeah, I'm going away to... Um, America with my dad, um, so we're off, off off to America for a, a week or so. Um, I had to rebook it because uh, I went to Tubbs and went, oh, I'm booking my holiday. I said it's 16th of September that we're flying. <laughs> we went, went, you best get that rebooked. He went, that's end of season due. I went, oh, like it's a good job I asked then. So I remember saying, I went, I went, surely it'll be fine. It'll be before then. Cause it's usually we before end of season, uh, yeah. end of season due. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've got it all changed and everything. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting away for a little bit. Oh, I think I think that night's going to be amazing. I can't wait for it. It's going to be great this year. Yeah, it's going to be really good. Uh, yeah. Not just the team, but you know, you've got a uh, women's team and, and teams like that. You know, it's going to be a good night for just Sheffield mm-hmm. Eagles as a whole. Never yeah. mind. Men. What's, what do you think to the women's team at the moment? They're flying, like, aren't they? Yeah, they're smashing it. It's, it's really good to watch. Um, you can see every, every game we've watched them, you can see them like, improving and getting better. Um, and they all sat there a bit similar to us, you know, like a real tight knit group who enjoy playing for each other. Yeah. Um, so I love getting down early and watching them before we get on. Well, it's, I've never seen a club as tight as that. As the thing that I've said it to Mark and I say it to everybody all the time, it's nice to see each each club wearing the same kit so everybody wears the same jersey with the same sponsors and everything. And I don't think any other club does that. Everybody looks like, as soon as you see it, it's like Shepherd Eagles is there and that's the way it should be with everything. Yeah, so I think it's you know to say this is the yeah. first year that you know we've had this sort of going for us. Um, it's come on massive, um, and you think that a few years down the line where it could grow to, um, yeah. you know, it's exciting times. Yeah. Oh, two people in our chat room can't go. Tasha says she can't go, and neither can Katie Pete. So the no, two people Tasha's aren't going. Yeah, Tasha, she's away. She yeah. says, "Oh, that's, uh, it. that's no that's excuse, it. Tasha. You best get it rebooked." <laughs> Uh, she says uh, tickets are flying out everybody wants to go to get in touch ASP tickets are flying out yeah I've got mine me and the missus yeah. are coming uh, love, Katie it. it's oh it's going to be a great one especially with all four teams there the, the award yeah. ceremonies are going to take on that long it's going to be great three, co- three course meal I'm going, no, 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 no. Um, Katie asks are you nervous before a game uh, yeah every game no matter who you play you get nervous um, I think you sort of the minute the game that you go out there and you're not nervous is worrying. Um, because I, I think that's when it probably starts to not not mean as much to you if you're not going out nervous from a personal perspective. 
Um, no matter what game I'm playing in, you always get them pre-match nerves that start to kick in, you know, a couple of hours before kickoff. Mm. Tasha says she's getting enough stick as it is, Blake. Shush. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's going to be great. Oh, oh. But um, uh, Kata says, nervous for your safety or what? Is she yeah, nervous like that? So she's no, not, not safety. It's more nervous... Uh, Nervous about putting in a performance, really. Um, it's you know, you want to go out there and put your best foot forward and have a good game. Um, yeah. so it can be nervous sometimes from that aspect, from a performance point of view. Um, yeah. you know, in terms of getting injured and stuff like that, um, I always find that if you're going to games or training a bit half hearted and a bit uh, reluctant, that's when you seem to get injured more than when you just throw yourself in as hard as you can. Yeah. Although, yeah. last couple of last couple of injuries I've had, I haven't reflected that really, yeah. but yeah. 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 Craig Chapman Jr. says, uh, cheers for being the water boy for the Hawks on Saturday, mate. Anytime. <laughs> all, all going down watching Hawks. Yeah. Oh, great fun. Although I'm not we, we did manage to catch Chappers missing a conversion front of sticks. Oh <laughs> but we've got that on video. So that that was worth it. It was worth going down just to watch that. Well, how are the Hawks doing this year anyway? Are they all right? I mean, I yeah, they're doing well. Um, they're, you know, I think that I think it were forty-eight nil win um, on Saturday. So you know they've got a, a really good team as well. Uh, you know, quite a lot of my mates play from as well. So I love going down and watching them play. When I've got Friday night games, you can go down and watch all of stuff like that. Yeah, awesome. Well, I think, uh, Mark, have you got anything else? A nice Saturday, uh, that's mate. Good. Yeah, we've we've, <laughs> we've uh, filled the hour nicely, but it's been brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, so so the um, the women's played on Saturday uh, down at Mosbra. Uh, I went down to watch and ended up being touch judge. And I can tell you now, they're a brilliant set of set of ladies, set of women. And the closeness that they've got is coming on game by game, as as Blake said, he's absolutely right. The closeness that they've got, um, and when there was a mistake or anything, everybody were there. Come on, on we go. And it's fantastic to see because where we were a few years ago, struggling to field a men's team, to now have women's LD wheelchair, it's wonderful. So. Yeah, and especially we've got to have a strong Hillsborooks as well. The uh, the sports thriving in the Steel City. Okay. Yeah, you know we've got it's a it's a great time to be a rugby league player or supporter in Sheffield. I think at the minute. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. And Sorry. Go on. It's just it's just exciting times for everyone, isn't it? Really. Um, yes. Yeah, um... uh, sky's the limit at the minute. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I think. I think this has been a cracking hour. I've loved every single minute of this for you, sir. Thank you very much for coming on. It's been an no, absolute thank you, pleasure. Anytime. Been, oh, and uh, very, oh, I think both of us are saying wishing you all the very best on Sunday. Uh, we we want to do a double of a witness, and especially Mr. Old, uh, Mr. Eagles uh, from the 90s himself, Mr. Kia, and a few of the old Eagles boys. So uh, yeah. if they're playing. Yeah, hopefully we'll, <laughs> we'll go out there and get the win. Yeah, so that everybody in the chat room wishes you all the success for the rest of the season, Blake. And we'll see you at the end of the season, do my mum. Yeah, it's... cheers, guys. Thank you for having me. Take care. Thanks, Thanks very much Thank for you. coming. Bye. bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. And there he is, Mr. Bl Mr. Blake Broadbent, Beans Two, Beans, whatever you call him. Absolutely, uh, gentlemen. And thank you absolutely. also to uh, thank you also to Simon Brown for arranging that. You know, he's been brilliant with us here on the show. I must I must tip me at uh, and say thank you to Simon uh, for. Um, Oh no no no! There's not a lot of hair there left. Uh, oi, 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 you, uh, yeah, I can yeah. hardly talk. Um, <laughs> a big thank you to Simon for that, and we'll oh. catch up with everybody at the uh, at yeah. the next home game. We've got witness a Sunday, as I say, bogey team. I will not be at this game, unfortunately, uh, but uh, I will be going over to York the week after. Mm. I'm actually going to Scarborough for the weekend. Now you would think go to York Friday and then go up to Scarborough Saturday. Yeah. No. Nah. Uh, no. Well, the problem <laughs> is I couldn't get an hotel room for anything less than 150 quid in York on that Friday. Mm. So it's actually cheaper to drive up to York, mm. come back, and then go back mm. to Scarborough Saturday on the train. Mm. So, you know. Also, anybody who is going to York, uh, I normally uh, fly the flag for going on the train and all that. You can't get back the Friday night after the game. So if you're going up, um, I don't know if any of the... Um, Blazing Squad, we're going to organise a minibus or anything. But public transport is not your friend, unfortunately, with it being a Friday night. But yeah. let's get as many there as we can. It's a new ground to tick off the list. Yeah. And uh, Daniel Burt says, anyone struggling getting a witness for the men's game? The women are playing away at Rochdale, if anybody fancies it. Come on, ladies. Come on, girls. Let's do it again. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, Where is it being played in Rochdale, by the way? Because I know there's a there are there are a couple of people who've asked me at the uh, at the OLP. So if if I assume it's not at Spotland where men's team play, but if you could let us know where it is being played, that'd be brilliant. We'll get the word out for anybody yeah. who can go over. Yep. So Tasha says we tried to organise a bus, however it's bank holiday and none was available. Sorry, there's no bus. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Mayfield Sports Centre in Rochdale. So that's Rochdale Mayfield ground. Rochdale Mayfield RL. Right. So ask yeah. Martin Brooks, then he'll know where it is. Oh, if anybody knows how to get there, it's Martin. Martin uh, yeah. Right, as we go on, ladies, they won again. They demolished Halifax. It's just unreal now. They are six, I think it's either 14 or 16 points difference behind Swinton. It's, it's less than that. I think it's about seven because yeah. there was a bit of confusion on the score. Sorry, I'm clock watching because I'm off to play touch in a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, we were clock watching a little bit. Um, Not clock watching. Scoreline watching a little bit because uh, Swinton had a 24 nil default. But um, if we got a certain amount, we would then go top on difference. Mm -hmm. We're actually short by about seven, uh, which is unlucky because the women did, the girls were brilliant mm -hmm. on Saturday. Uh, they kept the composure all the way through the game. And uh, is it four? Yeah. Four. Um, yeah. And there was a spell when Fax got a couple of tries, but the Reds never went down and they finished strongly. And uh, well done. You know, I got, a, I got a grandstand view of that because I got down there to watch. <laughs> and um, referee turned up with two flags. Oh. And we're like, he's going to need a touch judge here. And I'm like, I'll keep an eye out. Anyway, they had somebody doing it. And then he came over and he said, Sheffield, can we have a touch judge, please? Now, obviously, Dan and Liam were helping <laughs> were doing the team. Yeah. Andrea can't run. And everybody else were watching. So I just went, <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll go and do it. Because obviously, yeah. I've done mid-course and I know the rules to a point. So I went and did it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, in 32 degrees E in me chopping... Uh, cargo shorts running up and down and I went behind the sticks and gave the goals and I did the lot yeah yeah but uh, in all seriousness they, they were really really good on Saturday against um, facts were a big side you know yeah. the, the, the IFAX forwards were, were, were big were big girls and they handled it superbly mm -hmm. with the tackling and um, what you know they'll have learned and learned and learned and they're getting stronger and stronger and I can't yeah. praise them highly enough I really think that from yeah. a standing star to here in seven months it's incredible, mate. It really is. Yeah. Tasha says you did great, Mark. Thank you. Oh, there you go. My t-shirt didn't agree when I took it off later, but that's not, <laughs> so, that's not going to be all this. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so that was great. Yeah, no problem. I'll always help, as you know. Um, yeah. I'll have to uh, chip off in a minute because we're right, the, the people at car park coming. So, uh, uh, yeah, big thanks to Blake for coming on the show. It's always a joy when we have players on. And yeah. uh, I'll see uh, you all. Are you coming up for any more games, Dino? Is it just the no. end of season now? End of season for me. That's it. Yeah. That's all I can, I can manage now. It's the end of season one in middle of September. Yeah, smashing. Yeah. So uh, thanks very much. And I'll see all of we'll you see in York who are going. And then after that, at OLP. Yeah, and uh, it all flip with the Eagles chat soon very well. See what's happening yeah. with Eagles chat and reviewing. All right, pal. Have a nice one. All right. We'll do. See you later, mate. Yeah, bye bye. Ta -da. Well, now you've just got me. Now you've just little old me. Uh, if, go. If, I can, if I can leave the chat, if it lets me. There we go. He's gone. Ah, there he is. Just little old me now finishing off with. Right. Very simply, ladies are playing this weekend at Rochdale. The LD, the learning disability team in a wheelchair. Also, they've got training sessions at OLP and at the Sheffield Centre as well. Please, please, please go along and show your support. If you want to play the games, please, please do. Wheelchair is always looking for players. And we've got the girls team coming on as well. So we've got five, five Sheffield Eagles teams at this moment. It's been a wonderful 2022. I cannot speak highly enough of everybody for the wonderful support you've shown to this. So the wonderful support you've shown to me and Mark and everybody that's concerned with Sheffield Eagles. It's been amazing. If anybody wants to add their thing, there is a forum on Total Rugby League forums at the moment. In the general rugby league, it says the potential of Sheffield Eagles is enormous. Now, if anybody's not seen it, please, please do have a look at it because there is some interesting comments in there that are people that don't know a lot are going with their, uh, let's say, crystal balls. Let's put it that way because it's a lot, a lot of talk and uh, from what people are saying, it's a lot of tosh. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, congratulations. Let's go to uh, our friend yesterday. We've got a picture with Darrell Powell smiling. Well done, son. Um, I've sent an email off to Davil. I've sent him off to see if he would love to come on the show and talk about his time at the Sheffield Eagles. We won't be talking about Super League. We won't be talking about the current situation at Warrington. It's not fair. Uh, if we do get Davil, it'll just be about his time at Sheffield Eagles and his Great Britain career that he had 
uh, up to the time when he started and up to the time he left. So if anybody anybody's asking about it, please, please don't. Let's respect Daryl. We're trying to get him on as best we can. But I don't want to talk about Warrington or anything like that that's happened away from Sheffield. It's just it's Sheffield Eagles chat. And we just want to talk about his time at Sheffield Eagles as well. So I think that'd be great. Didn't address Dad's interview against Halifax. I've read some of those comics so funny. Oh, right. Okay. Um, sorry about that. I think I missed that one so far. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the performance against Halifax, what can we say? Well done, lads. And Corey, hey, someone have a word with that Corey Aston, eh? Come on. He gets man of the match playing for Halifax. Oh, my God. Gee, no wonder. I wonder why. But fair play to Corey. Professional to the end. Well done, my man. It's good luck to you at the end of the season, pal. I uh, hope you do very, very well. We are in the process of putting all the Eagles Chats interviews on YouTube. I did 10 last week. Um, it's going to take me a bit of time to go through the two years or something with interviews, Taxi Army, everything like that. I will have a read on YouTube, Dash. I will. In fact, get, no, no, I'll do it later. I can't do it now because that won't be fair. Uh, also, we want to send our best wishes, anything to Angela Gregory. Uh, she's at this moment, she's just battling chemotherapy, she's having chemotherapy at this moment in time. I'm hoping I can get something together and do a fundraising, something for Angela. If anybody doesn't know who Angela was, Angela was a stalwart of everything of Sheffield Eagles starting up in the year 2000 again. Uh, very, very well respected behind the scenes and everything. And she's, uh, she's battling cancer at this moment. I'm hoping to get something organised for her so we can do a, a little charity fundraiser for her. Um, it's uh, it's thing. It's eight years today since I got told I had mine, so uh, it's a bit close to home for me. Uh, but I'm hoping I can do something like just do a marathon Eagles chat or something where people come on and just chat away about all the memories and stories and things like that. But we send all our love and all our best wishes to Ange and everything that she has at this time. She had a second session today, and we're sending her every success and wish hope, hope it goes really, really well for her at this time. That's about it, guys. Unfortunately, time's beating us. We will be putting this on YouTube straight away. If anybody's missed any of it, you can watch it on the, the page or you can watch it on YouTube. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. We'd love to get to about 50 followers by the end of the season and then go from then. And then we'll see. All that. We have our little winter break, but we'll come back on with the uh, special guests and so forth all the way through the winter anyway. Don't forget, Sheffield Eagles, Mark Aston's uh, Rugby League All-Stars are going to be playing cricket couple of weeks. There's a few good names on that team already, such as Paul Broadbent, Johnny Lawless, Bright Sodgy, amongst others of the 98 team. It looks like it's going to be a great, great side playing cricket. I hope they're better than to play cricket at some point. But uh, anyway, good luck to everybody at Weekend Against Witness. We hope the lads do the business. Uh, all the things could be settled this weekend. Jewsby could be relegated this weekend. Uh, Keithley could be promoted as champions of Division 1. Uh, and then it's uh, Workington and Jewsbrick. Workington are already down, and then it's Jewsbrick if they lose this weekend. Uh, so it's up to them. So it all could be done and dusted by Sunday night anyway. Thanks to everybody for the wonderful support as always. I will see you guys next week. Have a great time on the weekend. Have a great time, whatever it is you're doing. We'll see you again very soon for another wonderful edition of Eagles Chat. Many, many thanks to Blake, to Blake for tonight. It's been amazing. You guys take care of yourselves. We'll see you very soon. Good night. God bless. Bye-bye.